Last week on Timcast IRL, which is our podcast conversation show, we hosted R.A. the Rugged Man. During that interview, it got very heated and very intense. We were, we were debating and arguing over political issues like critical race theory. And after the show, we actually had to take the episode down because R.A. had used a racial slur for white people several times. I don't agree with YouTube's rules in that capacity, but he did. And so we, we went into the uh, members only segment on our website where it also got very, very heated. And that's the first thing we brought up. And you know, one of the questions I had for R.A. the Rugged Man was, do you think you should be allowed to use a racial slur depending on the context or the race it's being used against? We ended up getting into a very heated conversation, a very heated debate where it ultimately culminated in me yelling at R.A. the Rugged Man, insulting him, and then him getting up and swatting the microphone. There's a bit more context than that. I mean, you know, he had called me some insults. He had mocked me and laughed at me. I had raised my voice to him and then basically implied that he was weak and, you know, told him he was that guy. And um, following this, there have been a bunch of people bring, bring this stuff up. But for the most part, uh, beyond that, you know, I addressed the issue. The video ended up getting like half a million views. I decided to, uh, uh, well, fo- following this, the Young Turks hosted him on their platform. Now, they didn't get that many views on it. And I feel like uh, Cenk Uger was really trying to bait me into, I guess, some kind of beef or whatever. Look, Jank, uh, you know, he was like, he's like, I'm talking to you, Tim. I'm laughing at you. I'm like, bro, please, you're allowed to laugh at me. Like, laugh at me all day and night. It's fine. Whatever. Um, however, I decided that this would be a good opportunity to explain my feelings on what the Young Turks said, why I am not a fan of the Young Turks, why I am not a fan of the modern progressive left, and why I think the Young Turks have continued to isolate themselves. One of the things that I talked about in the members only segment that I was mocked for by Cenk Uger, Anna Kasperian, and R.A. the Rugged Man was my history growing up on the south side of Chicago, dealing with gangs, gang violence, you know, all that stuff. One of the things the Young Turks said was that I was a liar. They didn't believe me. They said, what was the name of the guy who got veed in my basement? That's what it's called. When when you want to get initiated into a gang, they called it veed or violated, whatever. At least that's what they called it there. And yeah, that happened in my basement. So I figured, you know what? Um, While I don't really care to get into any kind of beef with Cenk Uger, in fact, I publicly invited him onto the show. I would love to have him. I think it'd be a great conversation. Outside of that, Anna and Cenk, you're absolutely allowed to call me all the names in the book, make fun of me, laugh at me, call me a liar, have all those opinions. I got no issue with that whatsoever. I do, however, have an issue with your disdain for the working class people, your, um, your, this, this idea that I could not have gone through this struggle because I'm too successful. And that's basically what happened. And that's been my experience since Occupy Wall Street. Before I got any public notoriety, they said, oh, you know, Tim Pool is, is, is mixed race and a high school dropout. And all of those things are a perfect example of what's wrong with this country because he's smart. He should be doing better. And then once all these newspapers started highlighting, you know, talking about me, they said I was a white kid. And that's exactly what we ended up with with Ari the Rugged Man. He called me like a white boy who didn't understand any of this stuff. The Young Turks implied that I was lying about my upbringing. And so that's what I really want to address. And we're going to talk a bit about my upbringing. We're going to talk about my history on the South Side. And then I'm going to talk about why I think it's so important to to address these issues in the context of the Young Turks. So joining me today is my sister, Lisa. Hi, everybody. I can't keep track of your last name. I know. I've been married and... Do you want to pull the microphone a little closer? Yeah, yeah, I can do pull that. It, pull it real close and talk right into it. Like that? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's your last name now? Well, now it's, it's pool. pool. Now okay, it's, it's pool back again. to pool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's back to pool. Yeah. Because you've, you've, you've been married a couple times. A and couple. Uh, yeah. People have seen Chris on the vlog. Right. And so, uh, you know, people know him. And I figured, well, actually, I'll put it this way. After the show, you know, I'm talking to mom. And she was like, me and Lisa were saying, I can't believe he would say these things and why you're lying. And then when uh, earlier today, when the Young Turks video was going around and I'm just like, he's trying to get me mad and riled up, whatever. That's fine. He's allowed. He's allowed to be mad at me. He's not. He's allowed to not like me. But then you walked in. You were like those I, things he was saying. He I was could lying. not believe the things he was saying on the Young Turks. I was watching that. I'm like, what? Oh, my God. And then when I watched I, I watching the interview with you, what he said like, he kept asking about your back. He wanted pictures. I was like, Yeah, that what? was weird. Wasn't that Show weird? me a picture Show of you when you were 10 Show years old. Picture. I was like, I'm like what? what? Yeah, and I, every, he, didn't, he didn't believe any of the stuff that went on when we were kids with the gangbangers. Man, I remember all of it because I know I'm older than you. Yeah. By quite a few years. And five years. Five. Well, okay. Okay, what was our address? 4941 South Laramie in Chicago, Illinois, off of Archer and Cicero. Actually, off of Archer and Laramie, to be exact. 
right by the West Lawn neighborhood. The West Lawn neighborhood was infested with gangbangers. The Popes, like you said, the Almighty Popes, they were all there. The Two Six, the Kings. Oh, yeah, the Two Six. Remember I the remember two six? Those. Yeah, the Two Six. I remember <laughs> all of that. And I've had close friends of mine um, almost get jumped by the Queens. I had a good friend of mine. Oh, yeah, the Queens. Remember the Queens? Um, I got a friend of mine um, that I talked to today, and um, she was like, I remember that. She was like, her and her friend were walking down the street in the city, and the queens were trying to jump them. And my girlfriend, she topped fences, got away. But this one girl, she ran down the street straight, and they caught her, and they didn't see her for an hour when Michelle got to her house. And they're like, oh, yeah, where is she? Where's the net? And then I guess she showed up all beat up because they jumped her and they got her. And it's like, that stuff happened. We lived that. They came to our house. Those yeah. popes, they were there. And it angered me so much trying not to get well, we had, There were like several like, parties, quote unquote parties. There was. And I know I was babysitting um, for a couple that lived across the street from us. I don't know where you were. And I know, um, I in don't know. In the house with I don't know, in the house with like, you know, our other brother. And um, so I was babysitting across the street. I look upstairs and I see these grown men walking in. And now, now I'm going to say, my parents, they work a lot. Like, my mom was selling cars. She had a coffee house. Remember, she had the yep. coffee house? This she was, was never home. She worked her butt off at that coffee house. And to be a new business owner, it was like her baby. So she spent the night there. And our dad was a firefighter, so he would not be home some nights. He, he would do, like, 24 hours. He would. And then he would be back for two days. Yeah, he or, was, like, right? on, off. It was, like, first, second, and third it shift. It was something like that. It yeah. was weird. And I know they both worked really hard. Blue collar, they tried to work hard. And my mom, when she sold cars, I remember her trying to sell cars while having the coffee house, which is, like, damn next to impossible. She was, I didn't know she was doing both. She did do both briefly, and it drove her damn near insane it was really difficult on her and she was so stressed out and i know it kills her because she wasn't at home a lot well so anyways i'm i see these grown men walking in out of the house and i called the phone and i was like who's in the house because it was like you and chris you know and some guy answers the phone he's like yo this is k dog and i was like what <laughs> what k dog i don't Sniff dog whatever Sniff yeah dog. i know you're really there was j rock i remember was that. Oh, their names were so dumb. yes yeah. but shine was was cool he was cool. Yeah. And I remember that. And then when I finally got done babysitting, I tried to get them all out of the house. But that was like impossible. They're like cockroaches. They were like infested in our house. There was like 30 people. Yeah. It was like drinking. a big old party. So I, was, I was like 10 and one guy handed me a, was it Red Dog? Was that the beer? I, th I think so. Red, Red I can't Dog? remember. I had my own room. Thank God. And there were two... There was a couple there. I don't want to say names, but... Yeah, it was a Red Dog. Um, it was a Red Dog? Red Dog beer. There was a couple, this boyfriend and girlfriend, they frequently came to our house, and the boyfriend was a Pope. He completely was in the gang. His first name was Brian. I'm not going to say his last name, but um, and I know it. Um, but he was totally in that gang, and his girlfriend, Kelly, was at her house. Now, I don't oh, know if yeah. you remember this. Yeah, I remember But they got a big old fight in the backyard, and it dragged out into the alley, and it came into our kitchen. And yeah. I remember Bri Brian scratched her neck. She had scratched scratches all in that big ghetto fight and she tried to use the phone to call um a friend mickey sniff dog or whatever and uh he, brian ripped the phone out of the wall <laughs> ripped the phone right out of I the think wall i remember that and i was like the phone hey was my mom's gonna kill us our parents are gonna kill us and i so because he was abusive this guy he was trying to beat her ass and so he um i grabbed her arm i dragged her into my room real quick locked the door shut it and i said call mickey to pick you up call him to pick you up it was insane those gangbangers in our house, it was the worst. Uh, yeah, we totally grew up with that stuff. And for that guy <clears throat> to come on here and say that you didn't live with any of that stuff was complete bull. How old was I when I stopped going to high school? Oh, God, I don't even remember. Oh, God. I don't even know. When did you stop going to high school? I stopped going to high school freshman year. My freshman year. Six months of my freshman year, I quit. Yeah. And I was trying to get my GED because I got my mom at the coffee house. And... We meant to go do that, and it just never ended up happening. And um, I, I worked behind the counter at like 5 a.m. helping her their coffee house. And it was long, crazy hours, and it was hard. You, you, you left freshman year? I did. I left freshman year. Wow. And I, remember, I did too. I remember um, the gang banging was so bad. I don't know how mom and dad um, caught on to it, or they knew Chris mom was wasn't in trouble. Mom wasn't there. She had you. I don't know if you know this, but she knows she enrolled Chris into the north side to get uh -huh. him away from the south side. And then I ended up leaving the house and basically going and hanging out. At you other lived at someone else. You lived at, the, at Wayne's house or something. Yeah, Wayne's like house. Wayne's house? I basically like, would just go there every single day. Didn't, it was. I like, would be on his porch waiting for his family to come home. Yeah. Because because he had a he had a, he, you know he was a, I don't want to drag too many of like you know my friends who are un, right. uninvolved in all this stuff, but I had a you know I knew this kid from school, and being at his house was normal, and his and his parents were there. Yeah. And they would give they would order food and they would order pizza and they would go to the mall. You know and what when, this I, was? when I was at the house, it was empty. It was there were gangbangers. No 
there was there was, yeah there, or there was no food and I, and look I don't know I, I think you know mom and dad don't like that that was the case they don't but it was kind of like we were lower middle class we weren't like right. we, we were or upper lower class like bouncing between those and I think what happened was and I could probably be wrong because I don't know what the finance situation was like my, my mom and dad took out a loan took out a loan on the house that we had yeah it was so they could open a business. Because my mom had a dream that she would get out of all this, that, mm-hmm. that we would we would make it and that there would be a franchise and then the fam- there'd be a family business. And it didn't work. Long story short, we lose the house. So we go from like crabs in a barrel trying to crawl out to getting sucked back in and then divorce and all right. that stuff. I feel like it was like the show Shameless. I don't know if you ever saw that show. It's about the south side of Chicago family, except our parents weren't drug addicts and alcoholics. Tim was Liam. He found a new family. <laughs> I was Fiona. I took care of Chris and Tim, and Chris was lit. Chris was really, Chris was gifted. He went to a gifted school, and that's the show. Early on, yeah. And then that was us. We lived the show like shameless, like totally, hundred percent. That was so us. we we. Er, I feel like early on, you know, we're on the south side of Chicago. It's relatively bad. We we were on the southwest side, so it wasn't like we were in the place where. Well, actually, I take that back. Two blocks away, the hot dog stand had bullet holes in the windows. Yeah, we were so. lived by like, their courts. Yeah, it was kind of, Archer and Cicero wasn't a great place. There was, yeah, yeah it wasn't It, it was wasn't Bo's great. where uh, a firefighter could, re- could have a family of five and right. afford a house. It was, all, it was all, we grew up in a neighborhood with all cops and firemen. That's Do you remember mom, so I was a little kid. I was like three or four. Mom's, when the brick got thrown through the window of the van. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember what year that was, but I remember... Mom said In it was the minivan. 89. Was it the minivan? Yeah. We had, the, we, had a, the, we had a caravan. Or whatever. It was, I, I think it, we had a Dodge caravan. And I, I think that's what the car was. They threw that, a brick through the window. They threw a brick through it, yeah. And mom said that they put pamphlets in the door about I KKK stuff and did. race mixing. It was, uh, and I remember someone threw a rotten chicken in our yard. They did stuff to our, yeah, they did stuff to our house. It was, I don't know if you mom, remember that. I, I remember the damage, but I, I, it, I was, I don't know, probably too young People to People vandalized like, our house. It was not cool. Mom said... <laughs> They had put white supremacy pamphlets on the door, right. and she said they were being smart. They knew that if they put it in the mailbox, they could get in trouble. So they were tr- they were they were doing it in clever ways to harass us. And I can't remember why she said it stopped. She said something happened where it, where it finally stopped. But she told me if if once they realize that we act like white people, they'll leave us alone. Oh, I remember that fear. Yeah, that she had. That I remember that. Yeah, she grew up with it. She did. She grew up with a lot of that stuff back in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Because yeah. she looked like way more Korean. She is more Korean. Well, than so what, what people, I, I mean, first of all, the lighting in this room is as bright as it can possibly get. <laughs> but I, I think it, it, he said, show me a picture. Okay, sure. Like maybe I should pull up the pictures because, I mean, I was, d- depending on the season, you know, I can get really dark, really tan or really yeah. not tan. You got that olive skin tone <clears throat> kind of like I do, I guess. But I guess the issue then is, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how if, if you've experienced it, but I was talking to Chris about this too. Chris being our brother, that only in that neighborhood did it not matter what our race was, because there are people who are like Mexican, there are people oh, who yeah. are Polish immigrants. Yeah, it really didn't matter. But when I would me and, and Chris was agreeing with me on this, like when we would go to the suburbs, the white suburbs, they were like they knew that you weren't a white person. Oh, you mean like Naperville, Wheaton, like yeah, those yeah, kind we, of the if, nice suburbs? Yeah. If we so you know as I get older and I start hanging out with more people from different areas. It would always be like, oh, so so what are you? They immediately would be like, you're not a white person. And the funny thing is, this this yeah. is like the, the 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 I guess the apex of what the young Turks are trying to talk about and claim we didn't have is <laughs> you you look white to us, therefore you couldn't possibly know discrimination. I didn't like that. He was stereotyping you like that. All right, that's what that we just... we don't like. <laughs> yeah. And so so the issue for me is like, I don't know how many times I need to say like I don't think we had it worse than like black people in this country who deal with like right. hardcore racism. But I was just trying to point out, it's funny because this is a leftist talking point, intersectionality, that different people of different backgrounds experience different kinds of racism. So like when I put down on a a job application, I'm Asian and white, you know, dad told me not to do that ever again. Stop. They're not going to hire you. They're going to discriminate against you. So you need to like lie and say you're something else. But they can tell if you're not being white, you know, or they can tell if you're not white. Yeah. They they could look at us and be like, oh yeah, what are you? You're you're, You're clearly something else. Right. Only when... My argument goes against the left argument. Do they actually say what I'm saying is not true or I'm lying? I can't believe that guy was saying that. I was just like, man. Well, I so 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 here, here's what I want to get to, right? Right. With you basically here telling, you know, part of the stories because there's a yeah. million more. Remember when uh, our so bike many. got? Remember when my bike got stolen? 
We were looking for uh, um, Brycey, I think. Bry- oh, the, our dog. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> and yeah. Then, and then I was riding on the pegs. Yeah. And we wrote, we wrote by the hot dog stand and the dude ran up and said, give me the bike. Oh, by Rocket Park. Yes. No, we weren't by Rocket Park. Wasn't we were by, by L&M Park? Hot Dogs. Yeah, that hot dog stand. Wasn't it wasn't by, by Rocket Park? Park. I thought that was the hot dog stand by Rocket Park. Because no. it was one. L&M was when you right, walked down. Oh, it was like, no, it was farther. But it was like toward like. Um, we rode our bike near 47th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and forty seventh was the barrier between like the white white mixed neighborhood right. and the black neighborhood. And a black dude ran up and said, "Get off the bike." And then we were just two little kids who got off the bike, and then he stole it. Yeah, just, that I, I there's so many bikes that got stolen like by us. Like, oh my god, it happened all the time. The hot dog stand had bullet holes in Did the it? window, and the windows were bulletproof. I guess it was crazy. Was in my Rocket Park. I think you're right. I think it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. L and M was right. Was on was right on Laramie. Or yeah. no, I think it was on Leamington. Yeah, it so was you go down and you down. turn right. Yeah. It was like two blocks away. Yeah, I remember. So that. anyway. Here's what I think is important to understand. Several things. The Young Turks brought on Ari the Rugged Man. I don't know this guy's history. You know, some people were saying he was rich. Some people are saying he was poor. I don't think that matters. I think he's racist. And, you know, look, I think we, we hashed it out. We hugged it out. But I still disagree with him politically. When I would say something like, here's what my family went through. And it's a fact. And I had to witness particularly what mom went through with it. He's like, I don't care. You're making it up. Your mom's Jesse Smollett. I, I can't believe he said that. You know, that's, that was, I cannot believe he said that. You know, right now, as we speak, my daughter in school right now, your niece, yeah. she's been being called, she, this whole last few weeks, three boys have been calling her a ching chong for the last three weeks now. That's been happening right now. And I've had to deal with that racism with her in school. But she's an, an eighth Korean? Yeah. She doesn't look that Korean. She basically came to school, had a Chinese fan, and um, some boy was like, what is that? And made fun of her fan. And she's, But she's also like, what is she like 30% white or something? Yeah, she's like more white, but she's like No, thir- she's like less white cuz she's Well, she's her dad is Irish. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. and then she's got the Korean side for me. So she's got the portion of um Asian like you do, kind of like you. But these and then she's like no, actually I'm part Korean. And the whole but few last few weeks. Yeah, but the whole last few weeks they've been calling her a ching chong and stretching their eyes. And I've had to call the school and I've had to deal with that. Well, that that can't possibly like, happen cuz she's white, right? Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. So the, so but but also I mean, I don't, I don't even know what your ethnic background is. Oh, I know. So I did take the ancestry test DNA. So um, turns out I'm, um, I'm a little bit of German Irish. I'm uh, a quarter Korean. It did confirm that. You're part ancestry. Japanese. I am a little bit Japanese, yeah. and uh, I am uh, European Jewish. Turns oh. out. Wow. Yeah, tell me about it. <laughs> that threw me too. I thought so I was Hispanic. <laughs> we have, we have, we have different. Uh, dads. Right. We do. Um, and I don't know any. I, we, we grew, I, as far as I know. I think yours was Dutch. <laughs> dad? My, my dad? Dad's or Dutch. our yeah, dad? Our so dad. Yeah. When I was born, it was it was dad, mom, and you. And so yeah. that's all I know. I don't know anything about when you were younger and with mom before dad or anything like that. Um, I don't know a lot. Um, I know that it was just mom and I. And then she met dad, our dad, because he's. Definitely my dad too. I'm but then he adopted you. And he adopted me, yeah. yeah. And uh, it was just us. And then he met dad. And then she, she met dad. I mean, and then had you two. Yeah, <laughs> basically. So here's what I want to say about the Young Turks. <clears throat> when uh, there's a guy named Vosh. I don't know if you know if you've, if you've heard about Did who he, he was. Him? No, you, you wouldn't have met him. But no. he talked about this, and he made a really good point, a very important yeah. point about this. He played the clip of when I was talking to Ra. He was live streaming. And the audience was like, you know, F Tim Pool and all that stuff. And he said, let's be real, guys. If this was any other mixed race Asian person saying they experienced racism and a white guy was laughing in their face, you would be on their side. But you just don't like Tim Pool. Oh, my God. But he's right. So I was like, thank yeah. you for defending me. Of course, he later That's... went on to say I was racist, but sure. Yeah. It's funny, like, to he, have the... He is right, though. Yeah, if it, if it was any other person being like, I come from a second generation mixed race family and, yeah. and we had white supremacists attack us, the woke people would be like, you see, that's the problem. Yeah. But here's the problem the Young Turks have. So for one, I think for the most part, Jenk was trying to bait me into giving him attention or whatever. That's sure, whatever. Jenk, you're invited on the show. You don't need to laugh at me. You're allowed to. You can do whatever you want. But I really genuinely do want Jenk to come on the show and sit down and have a conversation about everything. I think it would be amazing. And I think we would disagree a lot. And we'd probably, you know, be arguing and all that stuff. But it would be great. So I'd, I'd love for you to come on the show. And everything you said, you want to you want to laugh at me? By all means, do it. The one thing I said about Ari the Rugged Man is I was wrong to raise my voice to him. I was wrong to yell him. Because I invited him here. I asked him to do me a favor and come on my show. And then when he disagreed with me and didn't like what I had to say and made fun of me, I took it personally and raised my voice. 
I, you can't do that. You can't be like, come into my house. Now I'm going to be mad that you're saying this. No, 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 no. I invited him here. I, I'll, I will own up to that one. But I will address them saying I'm a liar and that these things didn't happen because they literally did. So here's what I think the real problem is for the Young Turks. They claim to be progressive. They cannot have for their narrative poor people succeeding. Like, so you were a stripper. I was. I was. I did do that. You come a little closer to your mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm getting real but, comfortable. <laughs> but so, so uh, uh, you get you drop out of high school. You end I did. up being a stripper. I did that for a few years. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. And uh, you got your GED? Uh, yes and no. So no, you didn't get your GED. No, I, uh, I don't have a GED. I don't have a high school diploma. True. I, I passed everything but the math. <laughs> I got to work on that. I actually went in there and passed everything but the math. So here's I'm the problem for it. their narrative. <laughs> One of the things that he asked me is like, where'd you learn to talk like that? I don't know. TV? Yeah, that about that. Like he, he just, it, I, I know you speak articulate, and I know maybe, maybe I have more of a Chicago accent than you. I don't know, but like TV, he didn't. Yeah, I don't know. He, he really, I don't know what his problem was with you. He just didn't. It's, didn't. it's, it's, it's simple. The, the, the reason the Young Turks are saying all these things, there was no real substance to their arguments. By all means, come here and hash them out genuinely. Both Anna and Cenk, by all means, come here and say everything. Do all the research. Bring a dossier and say, here's our problem with you. I will gladly allow you to come on my show and say all of that stuff. But I really genuinely believe the issue they have is that when they go around saying, we need government intervention for healthcare, we need government in- intervention for education, you know, the system is rigged, all of that stuff, it really hurts the progressive narrative that a high school dropout from the South Side of Chicago, from a second generation mixed race family who experienced racism, has succeeded, is running a big company, and encourages people to be strong and to succeed as well, and that you don't need to be living under the boot of the government for these things. Exactly. I, not, yeah. not, I'm not going to pretend like Jenk likes the Democrats or anything. He hates them. He hates the establishment and all stuff. But this narrative is like, during Occupy Wall Street, like I said, they're like, you're this mixed race guy and, and you know, you failed, you, you dropped out of high school, but you're so smart. Like, you should be successful, man. This proves the country is broken. It's racist. It's classist. And then a month later, Time Magazine puts me on this like big feature and they're like, he's a white kid with a silver spoon in his mouth. And what they love to say now is Tim Pool's from the suburbs of Chicago. Yeah. Because <laughs> when it turns out I'm actually from Chicago, their only retort is, the suburbs? No, no. That's why I asked you the address first thing. Yeah, it was the south side of Chicago by Midway Airport. We yeah. didn't grow up in the suburbs like Wheaton or Wilmette or Mount Prospect or Naperville, which are very nice suburbs, by the way. But we yeah, didn't grow Evanston. up in those. Evanston. We didn't grow up in those nice suburbs. No. We went to school on the south side of Chicago. I mean, Mark Twain. I went there for a brief moment. It was yeah. a public school. Kennedy. And, there were, and, and they had their own mini gang in the school. Yeah. Do you remember like, Kennedy High School? Yeah. And there yeah. was there was a fight. Like the, the, the first month <laughs> I was there, a fight to... broke out and yeah. someone pulled out a gun. I, I mean, the high school I went to was Maria High School. It's closed now, but it was an all girls Catholic high school. But I only went there for a brief period. And it was by Marquette Park where people got shot on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> I remember uh, I was told by Rick. I don't want to say too much about these people's last names or anything that he called me and he was like, he said he saw two people dragging a carpet with feet hanging out the back of it. Oh, and then the next day they found a dead body. And this, that was over on like 63rd in California. I doubt it. There were some kids who were, uh, I don't know the full story of this. These are just sto- some of the stories we just heard. There was like a fentanyl outbreak really early on, like well, like the, one of the first fentanyl outbreaks right. on 63rd and Cicero around there. And then there was um, some dude was going to a party and they pulled up like a block away from where the party was and parked but they parked in front of a drug dealer's house who walked up and knocked on the window and was like, what you want? And then they were just like, fuck you, get away from us. Yeah. And so the dude shot two bullets in the car, killing him. Yeah, Something like that. I, I, that, that like, we were at the party. I, don't, I, wasn't, I wasn't witness to like the, oh, the shooting or anything. But yeah, it was like around 63rd in California. And we were at this party and then they were like, holy shit, dude, someone like fucking just got shot twice in the stomach. He's dead. And yeah, the girlfriend shit. I was talking to today, she uh, was telling about the same girl that uh, I pulled in our, my room with the phone. Um, she was at, there was a bunch of kids hanging out back when they were way in the early mid nineties or something. And, uh, that girl, she broke a bottle off of a table and she went across someone's forehead. There's blood everywhere. It was just insane. The gangs that were in our house though, like stuff like that happened. We had fights in our house and our backyard and our, yes. (laughs) I mean, they, they used my bed. Yeah. And then I remember I was like, I was a little, I was like, what, 10? I think and you so were. they were just like the older guys were like, stay away, stay away, bro. Like, keep them, keep them away from the room. And then like I walked over to the room and I pushed the door open and they were banging on my bed. That's I know. And then they freaked out and they pulled me away and they were like, yo, come on, little man. And then they, <laughs> I remember them taking my sheets down to the laundry room 
washing them. Oh, that's nice of them. Yeah. How <laughs> old were those guys? I don't know. I think they had to be like in their late teens. Some of them are in their early, early 20s. 20s. Yeah. I think so because no, Sean was older than that. Though. He was older than that. Yeah, he'd yeah. be in his thirties. That guy was a lot older. And but they clean the Almighty Popes clean the house. I think they did. They made macaroni and cheese for us too. They did. They, some of them were nice, and then um, some of them. There was the one guy. He uh, one of them, one of the gang bangers. He robbed our house. He did. He stole dead seven hundred dollar bike. Yeah, he stole, stole a camcorder. They he whacked off my, onto his magazines. Yeah, they. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember that. They Family stole, friendly. I'll, I'll, I'll tone it down. They um they stole my Nintendo sixty four. They stole my Game so Shark. My, my friend's Game Shark. It was James's. Yeah. James. Oh, I remember. Yeah, I know. Let me about. Game Shark. And then they didn't take the PlayStation. They took the Game Shark out of it. That's right. And I was like, Game Shark is a cheating thing. You guys know what Game Shark is. Yeah, I remember. They that. stole that. They climbed into the fr- through the front window. Yeah, they did, and it was awful because we had our camcorder with family movies and stuff on there that we'll never get back because this guy like yep. robbed our house. So we did have gang bangers in our house, and we did grow up with that stuff. And it's <laughs> for that guy to come on here and just be poking at you like, "Who are your friends? Who'd you roll with?" Yeah, Who'd he was you, like, "Show me a picture. Show me with? what's their name." And I was like, "Are you serious Yo, right now?" <laughs> I got no. I, I don't know if Andy'll get mad at me for saying his name, but oh, no. uh, Jenk Uger was like, "What's the name of the child who got veed by a gang?" Andy Weiner. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know, right? Like I, he, he was like one of our best friends growing up. He was the, it was like I, I call him like the Eric Cartman of our friend group. He was, he was the Eric Cartman. But, but th- that was, I, I wasn't hanging out with him back then. Yeah. That was like so. Chris was a year and a half older than me, and that's a bigger gap when you're a lot younger. So Chris was hanging out with these guys. Yeah, and, Chris, I think is the one that brought him in the house because he was starting to get initiated and he was starting to hang out with that bad crew, and he brought him in. And, and Dad was like, never hang out with Andy ever again. He's not allowed in the right. house. And then I remember Andy came in one day, and I was like, my dad's coming home. You got to leave. And he was like, shut up, dude. Who cares? And I was like, dude, my dad's going to be here. And you're not allowed to be here. And he goes, break yourself. And then he <laughs> shot me in the leg with a BB gun. What? Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, no, God. Dick. I remember the cops knocking on our door and asking for um, our dad. And uh, they were like, are you, uh, you know, Mr. Mr. Poole? And he was like, yes. And he's like, I believe this credit card belongs to you. So I I'll, I'll, I'll say this too. Like, I wasn't witness to Andy getting beat in the basement. That's what they told me. And Andy, I remember he explained it to me. He said it was like. They were, they all hit him like, like pop, 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 pop. So he was like one, two, three, four. And then he felt like he was falling in slow motion and they hit him on the way down. Oh. That's the story I was told. I knew the gang bangers were there. I knew that he got, you know, beat up or whatever. And that's what they said happened. And uh, his name was, was Andy Weiner. And now he's probably mad at me for saying his name publicly, but like, Hey man. Yeah. I don't know. Like we, he was, a, he was a good friend of ours and I haven't talked to him in a decade or whatever, but he, he, he. Light music. He's, you know, we were we were stupid kids doing stupid things, and uh, I don't know what he's up to these days. But uh, there you go. There, I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. say everyone else's names because, like, I don't want to drag everybody into everything. But that's one of the tricks they try to do. Jenk was like, say his name because they know it's really hard for someone to be like, sure, let me explain to you a child victim of gang violence. Right. Let me expose. Well, look, man. You know, I think the only reason I'm saying Andy's name is because I think he'd be cool with it because he's not. He's, he's, he's not like a whiny loser guy. He's going to, no. he's, he's no. going to be able to stick up for himself and speak for himself. There's a lot of other people who might be really hurt and traumatized dealing with the, the death, the drugs and all that stuff. I don't think Andy's one of them. So I got no problem mentioning his name, but there are a lot of other people whose names I'm not going to mention. And I, 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 all I can say is I never once acted like that. What we went through was the apocalypse of poverty. Cause I've seen other countries, especially. Right. But all I was trying to say to RA was like, look, man, you know, other people experience this kind of stuff too. And I don't like it when you are a racist. So to Chank, to Anna, to R.A., my point is this. And let's make this very clear. Yeah, I think that, you know, black people in the United States experience racism way worse than I ever will. Way worse than many other different races. I think, you know, uh, I understand the points of intersectionality. I have no issue with them. In fact, I agree with a lot of them. My issue is the authoritarian application of them. My issue is elitists, millionaires, mocking and belittling people who've experienced these things. And this is why I'll give a shout out to Vosh, because Vosh, who I disagree with and who called me a conservative, which he's wrong about, he said, never argue with someone about their experience because they are the experts on them. You should always respond with OK, but or OK and. So if someone tells you something about themselves, unless you can definitively prove it wasn't true, you accept what they're saying about themselves because you wouldn't know. So the issue I take is here we do a show, you know, we do a show on Timcast IRL where we're just like, the elites are ripping you off. I think that we've got a problem with, you know, powerful establishment elites from the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, but mostly the Democrats who are trying to lie, cheat, and steal, manipulate, and put a boot on your neck. And I think Jenk actually agrees with me on those points. He just hates the Republicans more. 
So that's why I kind of feel like the whole bit is an attempt to just bait us into creating drama or whatever. But by all means, dude, if that's what you want, or if you want to have a conversation, you come on the show, and we can talk about it. Because he mentioned, he said, if you Tim Pool admits he's a racist, we'll have him on the show. Well, I, I don't know. Um, that's ridiculous. I'll just openly invite you to come on my show for any reason. There's no caveats and there's no consideration. You can just literally come whenever you want, walk in the door. We'll sit you down and put the camera on and you can get you the microphone and everything and we'll pay for all of it. I don't like that when people say, I'm poor, I was poor, I fought through these things, let's try and solve them. Your response is, I'm going to laugh in your face. That's the issue I took with Ari the Rugged Man, was that he's a white guy who says he has white privilege. I'm the second generation mixed race person, a quarter Korean, who's experienced a certain degree of racism, not the worst, but a certain degree. And his response is to laugh, belittle, and say you're a liar. I think the reason is when I tell him he's wrong and he's a racist, his whole narrative is broken. Same right. thing for the Young Turks. You know, Cenk is, is a large brown man. I believe he's Turkish. So he, by all means, he's entitled to his experiences and opinions, and he can believe what he wants to believe, and he can choose to disbelieve me. But I'll, I'll say outside of disbelief, Vosh nailed it. If you have someone who claims to have white privilege, and that is Ari the Rugged Man, and then you have another person saying white supremacists are bad and they attack mixed race people, why should it, why is his response anything other than you're correct? I agree with you. That was my point. See, the, the issue is tribalism. When I say those things, R.A. laughs and says you're a liar. But why is that lying? I'm literally telling, saying to him, like, what you just said, I agree with and have experienced myself. Because what they're really about is tribalism and drumming up anger and hate. So I'll, I'll wrap it up with, with a, a, a final thought that I think is important. And that's, I don't view what they do as genuine. Their only response is, you must be a liar. They don't actually care about working class people. They don't care about people like us. They don't care about our experiences. And they're so unfamiliar with what it's like to grow up in a place like the South of Chicago. These stories to them don't make sense and can't possibly be that, true. That, that really bothered me that he just was like, I, I don't believe you. And then to say you, had me, you made this Jesse Smollett story. And I was just like, what Isn't that crazy that it's like white supremacists attacked my, my family for being mixed race? And they're like, that's not true. That couldn't happen. But when Jesse Smollett came out with that story and he was like, two, two white Trump yeah. supporters, my guess, everyone believed him. Yeah, totally. It's, it's it, because they're driven by tribal politics, not principle. They don't care to help people. And they don't like the fact that a, a mixed race high school dropout from the south side of Chicago is running a multi-million dollar business. It yeah, flies in the face it. of their narrative. It flies in the face of what they claim is true. And that way, the, their only solution is to tell their audience, he must be lying. It can't possibly yeah, be true. They don't want to believe it. Well, they, I think because it breaks their narrative. Yeah. All of that critical race theory stuff, the lies, you know, Jank has repeatedly said CRT is not being taught in schools when critical race praxis is absolutely being taught in schools. And the Huffington Post just wrote an article recently where even a leftist said it was, <laughs> literally said it was. So I don't know what world he lives in other than he wants to, uh, you know, I guess play tribal politics for, yeah. for money. They, I'll, 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 I'll say one, one final thing. This is not a show, Timcast IRL, nor my channels, where I just scream MAGA, MAGA, MAGA all day. I've never been the biggest fan of Trump, but I did support him with a vote in 2020 because he's certainly better than Joe Biden. The Democrats are trash. And I thought his second term agenda had many good things in it. But what they do is they try to stereotype, you know, you're the right winger, you're the conservative, therefore you believe all these things. And the challenge with someone like me is it's just plainly not true. They, they, they can try and say all these things about it. But I'll tell you this. I genuinely believe Jenk will not come on this show because what's going to end up happening is the same thing that happened with Ari the Rugged Man. He's going to say things like, what about this, that, and this issue? And I'm going to say, I agree, you're correct. And it's going to be a big problem for him when he comes on the show and his audience realizes when you actually watch us in context, they would agree with us. So the only thing he can do is call me a liar without any evidence, right. without any basis. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. I don't know. Is there anything you wanted to add to? Um, nah, I just, uh, I just wanted to come on here and yeah, like, yeah, that stuff. We did experience all of those things. And for him to just tell you that you were lying and made up this story about our brick getting thrown into our minivan as a kid, uh, really pissed me off. They stole I was, the, I don't know, the probe got stolen. 
Mom's probe. That's yeah. right. Her SC probe. She woke up one morning. There was a screwdriver broken off in it. And the next morning it was gone. It was gone. And it was yeah. found and burnt to a crisp in a parking they lot. They destroyed it. They destroyed they her car. They didn't steal it and sell it. They burnt it to a crisp. They burnt it to a crisp. So, so I, I, I can't tell you why they did. I can't tell you why our home was vandalized. I can't tell you. I, well, I can't, I can't say this. I can tell you that my mom said KKK pamphlets were littered in the screen door right. and on the porch. I can tell you that a brick was thrown through the window of our family van. I can tell you that the front of our house was vandalized repeatedly. And I can tell you that my mom's car was stolen and then torched in a parking lot not too far away. And a rotten chicken got thrown in our backyard and shaving cream all over our tree. Yep. And it wasn't Halloween. <laughs> so, <It> wasn't. <laughs> so am I saying that the white supremacists escalated beyond putting pamphlets on our porch? No. Am I saying that maybe they did? Yeah, maybe. We know that one of the attacks, uh, at least so my mom says, I was a little kid, right? I want to make sure that's very, that's very clear, was due to the fact that my mom is very visibly a brown woman with a white man and little kids of varying colored hair and yeah. stuff. And then I want to stress this. The car was taken. They didn't sell it. They destroyed it. They, they set it on fire it. in a yeah. parking lot. They, tr they, they, broke a, uh, they broke a screwdriver off trying to steal it. And the next day, we went to the garage. The door was open. The car was gone. And when the cops found it, it was pulled in a park. It was just sitting in a parking lot. It was torched. You know, that wasn't even mom's car. It was a demo from the dealership she worked at. Wow. Yeah. I think she had to pay for that. Yep. It was awful. Yeah. But uh, far, far be it uh, from me to talk about what actually happened to my family. And then the people who are supposed to be my ally, the people who claim that white supremacy is bad, the people who claim that white privilege exists are the ones telling me none of that happened. We didn't experience racism. They laugh at me, they mock me, and they make shows about it. And that makes me sad for my daughter, too, because she's going through this thing right now with these people being extremely racist, like kids in her class. These boys are just, every day she, they're, they're, she's past, barely Korean. She's barely Korean, and uh, because she told them she was Korean because they're making fun of her fan, because it was a Chinese fan. But now every day when she walks in class, she's got some boy passing by her going, ching chong, and like stretching her eyes at her. It's, it's a funny like, thing where they're like, the Duh, Tim Pool makes says he doesn't like identity politics, but then he talks identity politics. I'm like, no, I don't like critical race praxis. I think identity politics exists and has various forms, both good and bad. But anyway, I'll leave it there. Lisa, thanks for hanging out. Oh, fun. you're welcome. It's my pleasure. And this has been a special, <laughs> I don't know, cultural discussion segment that I, and I've never done anything like this before. But now, by all means, all of the people in the world can write up whatever they want to write about. And I'll say this to anybody who wants to claim what's true and what's not true. 4941 South Laramie. We moved in, what, 1989? Yeah, it was and like it was 88, that, 89. It was that year that my mom says the brick went through the window and they started attacking the family. Right when we moved in. We, I went to Our Lady of the Snows, which was about a block away from kindergarten until the end of fifth grade, and then went to Mark Twain Elementary because our family didn't have the money to keep sending us to the Catholic school, and then went to public school. And then after that, I went to Kennedy High School for only a few months before leaving for a homeschool correspondence program I never finished. And then because my family tried to open a cafe and we used the house as collateral and the business didn't succeed, we ended up losing the house. Then my mom rented a house. Then my parents got divorced. And then there you go. But I, I'll mention that after all of that stuff with the gangs and everything within the next year or so, I started hanging out with some other kids, finding my own way, getting involved in Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, skateboarding. And the skateboarding still had a periphery with some of the gang stuff at, at Venom Park. But for the most part, that really helped me meet a lot of people and get out of these, get out of Chicago. Because then I was going to the suburbs and meeting new skateboarders. I was going to different skate, par skate parks, meeting different people with different backgrounds. And then I started traveling more and more and more. And I just got the fuck away from all that stuff. Right. I did too. I took off to Vegas in California <laughs> when, yep. when I was a teenager. Left. I just, I left. I took off out of Chicago. And all right. I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks for hanging out and watching this uh, weird special clip. You learned a lot about my background. And I appreciate all of you guys who follow. And uh, I'll say it with absolute sincerity. No conditions. Jenk and Anna Kasparian are fully welcome at their own convenience whenever they want to come on this show. We'll cover all of the costs. We'll get you first class. We'll get you a nice hotel. We're just about an hour outside of D.C. We will take care of everything. You guys can say whatever you want to say about me on my own show to my face. And I'm sure your fans would appreciate it. And I would love to have that conversation. Thanks for hanging out. And I'll see you all next time.